Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. My name is Will. Welcome back to another episode. I've been delving deep into all the issues regarding The Boring Company. I think I've come up with a slight problem that Elon Musk has overlooked. So I thought we could explore that today. Let's get going. So... Secondary tunnels and feeder tunnels. What? First of all, what is a secondary tunnel? What is a feeder tunnel? They're basically the same thing. You have your main arterial tunnel, and that is a tunnel that is constructed with a TBM. And then you have your secondary or feeder tunnels that come off the main tunnel and essentially feed it with pods or cars or vehicles. And they're critical to the running of this system. Without them, this system could not work for mass transportation. You wouldn't be able to get massive amounts of people into the system. So why are we not hearing about this from Elon Musk? And why has he not included that in his cost estimates? Elon is seriously underestimating feeder tunnels, their cost and also their complexity to build them. So here we have his quote that I keep going back to every single week, $15 million per kilometre for a two-way tunnel, or around $7.5 million per kilometre of single-lane tunnel. Every mile of main tunnel will be connected to a bank of elevators via a 300-metre feeder tunnel. Now, there might be two elevators, there might be four elevators, there might be ten elevators. We don't know. It has to be specific for the particular town or city where this is operating. But 300 metres of feeder tunnel for every mile soon adds up if you have 100 miles or 200 miles or even 1,000 miles of actual main arterial tunnel. So... The Boeing Co. is saying 15 million for two kilometres. I keep getting kilometres and miles mixed up. Is two kilometres. So, this is absolutely critical and has been totally forgotten, neglected by every other uh, media enterprise covering this. Feeder tunnels can't be dug with a TBM. They're too short. We don't have enough TBMs and the TBM has to be put into a shaft and then taken out of a shaft. So you can't you can't really use your typical TBM on this particular job. So you have to use uh, an alternate method. And that alternate method is obviously going to cost more than the Boeing Company TBM. It's been totally, totally overlooked. And I'm going to explore in a series of videos how we can overcome this and keep costs down and also improve the speed of construction of this particular element of the project, these feeder tunnels. So, deep shafts, fire escapes and elevators will all have a cost and it will all add up. Let's go over what is needed. So, I've banged out the sketchbook and I've been cracking with a few drawings. It's the best I can do. I'm sorry guys, I am not an architect. I am an engineer, I don't draw things. I tend to follow, follow diagrams and drawings rather than actually... Uh, you know, drawing the plans as such in these cross sections. But here we have a drone view of our site. We have an arterial tunnel here, which is your main tunnel that does 155 miles per hour. Then you have your secondary tunnel, which is a very short section of tunnel around 300 to 400 meters long that is speed limited to around 70 to 80 miles per hour where we have pods exiting the system and pods coming into the system. So, here we have it all marked up. We have our off-ramp, we have our on-ramp, and then there it is, our feeder tunnel, our secondary tunnel. Now, when I say off-ramp and on-ramp, I actually do mean, yes, there is a ramp, but it is not uh, a very, very sharp elevation. It is around a 1 in 6, 1 in 7 uh, gradient, maybe slightly more, maybe a 1 in 10 gradient, um, but in general, the actual middle part of this secondary tunnel is fairly flat. This is our drone view again, guys, so we are above the actual site we are constructing. Now, this is the important one. Here is our cross section. As you can see, we have our on-ramp and on off-ramp again. 
and then we have our bank of elevators. This part of the system has been forgotten about, but it is very, very important. How are you going to build that? How are you going to get that completed? Because you can't use a TBM. Now, I think it has to be done in two different sections, which I'm going to explore in another video. But you're definitely, definitely going to need to use pipe jacking, which is similar to a TBM, but you don't have the actual tunnel segments being assembled at the face of the machine or behind the tunnel shield. Uh, and then the actual secondary bit, this ramp or these ramps here, um, these are going to be have to be constructed using more traditional methods. However, the ramps themselves will not be particularly long, maybe 40, 50, maybe at the most 55 meters long. I hope you like. I hope you like the pictures I've drawn. <laughs> it's the best I can do, guys. That is the best office block I could do. I spent at least ten minutes drawing that, so please don't. You know, please don't make fun of me. <laughs> um. So yeah. As you can see from this drawing here, uh, it's not quite to scale, guys, but it, it's just easier for me drawing it like this. Uh, we've got our vehicles at the surface, which are going to come down our elevator shafts. Um, this bit here, the, the level part is around 200, 230 meters long. These ramps here around 40 to 50 meters long at the surface. This shaft itself, so from this base here to the top, I would like to keep less than 24 foot if possible, because then the elevator doesn't need to be as big. We're not moving the vehicles up and down as, as far, thus it's less energy and it's quicker. When I was thinking about this particular issue, I asked myself a series of questions. And I think the best questions that I asked myself were the following questions. Is this going to dramatically increase project costs? Now, I wouldn't use the word dramatically. It will marginally increase costs per mile of the tunnel because obviously the vast majority of the project is these main arterial tunnels however you have these uh, secondary feeder tunnels which are obviously going to add the cost but they're not that long and we're going to have to use more traditional methods like pipe jacking and more traditional tunneling methods for the final uh, quarter of the tunnel so I don't think it's dramatically, but there will be a slight increase in the overall project project costs if you inclu include these feeder tunnels. Uh, why hasn't Elon talked about feeder slash secondary tunnels? Well, it's not entirely Elon Musk's fault. He has been focusing on the critical areas, the TBM. The TBM is the actual critical part of this project, improving the tunneling process, improving the cost effectiveness, the speed, uh, the erection speed of the TBM and doing that safely and cost effectively is what he's been focusing on and to a small extent the pods and making sure that that system is fully autonomous and can work in a 3D environment. He's been focusing on those two elements and he has forgot or neglected to think about feeder tunnels. So it will come into his mind at some point, however, it, it, it's going to be further down the road, maybe six to 12 months when he suddenly decides, all right, we need to look at feeder tunnels and how we can do them cost effectively and qu quickly. This is my favorite question that I asked myself. Will feeder tunnels dramatically slow down construction timelines? No. The critical thing is the feeder tunnels are not part of the critical path. When I say critical path, the critical path is you have to do job A, then job B, then job C, then job D. You can do the feeder tunnels and the main tun tunnel simultaneously. In fact, you could have 10 different project sites. You could have nine different feeder tunnels all being constructed at the same time as the, the various main tunnels are being constructed and the various shafts or um, entry shafts for the TBMs. Therefore, it shouldn't really affect the actual timeline of the project unless you hit some kind of critical uh, problem in building the actual feeder tunnel. So, so no, it, 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 will not, it, it will not hold back the projects themselves. 
you will have to increase the number of uh, contractors you employ or the number of people that you employ yourselves to ensure that it gets done. Can we build feeder tunnels without excessive man hours? Yes. If, if we implement um, pipe jacking and we have our own team or we find a, a, a subcontractor that is very, very competent in uh, building uh, tunnels using pipe jacking methods, I don't think that will increase man hours that, that much. You don't really need that many people to uh, conduct pipe jacking. And then obviously a lot of the things in terms of sinking the shafts for the elevator and sinking the shafts for your pipe jacking, they can be done in a method that's, that's more uh, prefabricated. Um, the actual walls of the shafts can be prefabricated off site. If you need to construct uh, foundations, if you need to use board piles, again, they can be prefabricated. You could use micro bore piles. There are a lot of things other than the actual final sort of quarter of, of the actual tunnel that needs to be done with traditional methods. That will require lots and lots of man hours, unless you could invent some kind of uh, mining machine or adapt some kind of mining machine that, that could do that final uh, quarter of the tunnel, then maybe no. I think that it'd be very, very possible to create some kind of battery powered uh, mining tunnel that could do the final uh you know 50 meters on either side and before you know it that's it you, you know you, you've knocked through into you, you where the tbm is constructed and then that that's that's it so no i don't think you need excessive man hours if you plan in advance and you come up with your own construction systems that are going to minimize man hours uh, that are going to automate the process use more machinery and use more prefabrication so can feeder tunnels be built for less than $6.5 million per kilometer? Yes, I think that feeder tunnels can be built for around five, maybe slightly below five, definitely below $6 million per kilometer. So in the grand scheme of things, it's not gonna add a huge or even a, a very sort of minor percentage increase to the actual cost of this project. Will this be a complicated build? I'm going to say yes, there's going to be uh, your TBM, which is obviously the world's most advanced TBM. Then on top of that, you're going to use pipe jacking and then you're going to use some kind of uh, mechanical means for the final quarter of the tunnel. And you've got three different systems there, so you're going to have to have them all implemented together. Your actual critical path and your timeline or your program for this particular job is going to be uh, quite complicated how, how it all meshes together. Thus, it will be complicated if you get the right site managers, the right project managers, the right uh, uh, civil engineers on this job. They will all work together in unity and it will work. And if you keep employing the same people, if you have the same people working for the Boeing company, either have the same subcontractors or you actually employ people directly and you have you, them working on multiple tunnels, this will suddenly become a lot lot easier because all the problems uh, will be will be there all the time they will be able to understand them through experience and through learning from mistakes and therefore it'll become a lot easier over time so it will be complicated to begin with but they must use the same subcontractors or the same internal people they should really bring it all in house if they can bring this whole process in house including pipe jacking, including the TBMs, and including the more traditional methods of construction, it isn't that difficult. And that's my thoughts. I'm going to be exploring how we build the shafts, how we do the pipe jacking, and how we do the more traditional methods of construction in a series of videos over the next 10 days or so. And I've been putting a lot of effort into this, guys. And I think it's very critical that Elon Musk looks at this and he looks at the methods that I've suggested and possibly implement them with maybe a few changes because this could save the Boeing company uh, a good couple of million uh, dollars per kilometer of feeder tunnel, definitely. So I think that what we're going to explore in the next few videos is going to be very exciting, guys. This is right on my street. I hope you enjoy it. And please stay around and subscribe to the channel because there's going to be a lot more coming in the next uh, 10 days or so. Thank you for watching. This has been one of my favorite episodes to do. 
got the old notepad out and did some sketches. I've really sort of been thinking about these problems over the last uh, four or five days. I've enjoyed doing it. Please like and subscribe if you've not already done so. Thank you for watching and thank you to all my Patreons. Brilliant, brilliant guys for supporting this channel. I invest every single penny into this channel to make sure it is easier for me to produce excellent content like this. Thank you for watching, guys. Remember, don't be boring and hopefully I will see you soon. Goodbye and God bless you all.